Good evening, YouTubers. My name is Nubia. I am in recovery. I am reading out of the Life Recovery Bible. Yeah. And we are starting First Chronicles tonight. The big picture. The book of First Chronicle was originally part of a larger book that also included Second Chronicles. It recorded Israel history, starting with the genealogy of Adam's descendants and ending with Israel's in Babylonian captivity. This condensed history of Israel was written to give the Israelites hope as they thought to rebuild their nation after the exile. The primary focus of First Chronicle is the reign of King David who is presented as an ideal for the people to follow. The writer quickly glosses over David's faults and focuses on the positive aspect of his reign. We see David here as God saw him, a man after God's own heart. The first nine chapters of 1 Chronicles record the ancestry of Israel from the dawn of history to the time of Israel's return from Babylon. Oh. The list emphasizes the royal line of David, which had remained unbroken even through the terrible years of exile. This should have encouraged the Jews as they sought to rebuild their broken nation. While in exile, many have begun to think that God had abandoned them. The survival of David's descendants would have given them hope for the future. The last half of 1 Chronicles records the events of David's reign, emphasizing his role in leading the people to worship God. Although David was not allowed to build God's temple, God promised to build a royal house for him, pledging that David's descendant would reign forever. His promise was his basis. His promise was the basis for Israel's hope upon their return from exile. They could see that David's descendants were still among them. It was clear that despite Israel's past disobedience, God had not abandoned them. God was in the process of rebuilding his chosen people. The big picture. A. Anticipating David's reign. B. The reign of David. 1. The passing of Saul. 2. The accession of David. 3. David and the Ark of the Covenant. 4. The account of David's wars. 5. The census, the census taken by David. And there's a plane. As you can hear, can you hear the plane? Five, the census taken by David. Six, the arrangement for the temple. The bottom line, purpose to record the history of David's reign and to encourage and admonish, admonish, encourage and admonish the people of Israel as they thought to rebuild after the Babylonian exile. Author, unknown, Ancient tradition suggests that Ezra was the author. Audience, the people of Israel after their return from exile in Babylon. They written approximately 430 BC, setting the period of David's reign over Israel, the 11th century BC. Key verse, and David realized that the Lord had confirmed him as his king, as king over Israel, and had greatly blessed his kingdom for the sake of his people, Israel. Key people, David, Solomon. Recovery themes. The power of grace. David's life story is filled with the example of God's grace. David was not a stranger to sin. 
In the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel, we saw him commit adultery and murder. In this book, David proved to be impulsive, even when his intentions were good. He failed to listen to God's plan for bringing the ark to Jerusalem, which led to the death of Uzzah. The main theme of this book, however, is not David's failures, but his ability to learn from those failures. David had a heart that accepted God's correction and understood his loving forgiveness. It was David's openness, openness to God, to God's grace, that set him apart from the, op from the other kings of Israel. David knew the joy of forgiveness. Okay. The importance of worship. David knew how to worship. The spiritual part of him was an open book before God. A life that ignores or neglects the spiritual is a life that is barren of purpose and weak in resolve. All recovery must include a spiritual aspect or it will be anemic and unsuccessful. David shows us that spiritual issues and worship are central to our lives. He also makes it very clear that worship is not only private, it also involves our meeting together with the others. Recovery beyond our personal recovery beyond our personal recovery. David would never enjoy much of what he set up during his lifetime. He invested his time and possessions in things that would minister to others for centuries into the future. He collected materials for the temple. And organized the priests and Levites levites for their work there he was able to see beyond himself to the needs of others as we journey toward recovery we need to look beyond ourselves and see that when we experience healing and growth we affect not only our own lives but also the lives of those who follow us learning to accept no for an answer david had great plans for israel he was a dreamer he could envision great things ahead but God had his own plans for David. While David assumed that he would build a temple for Israel, God said no. So often, when God says no to us, we withdraw, argue, or feel rejected. Growth and recovery involve learning not only to say no, but also to accept the no that might come from God or from others. When God denied David's desire to build the temple, he promised in turn that he would build an eternal dynasty for him for David's lineage. Chapter 1. From Adam to Noah's sons. Okay, here we go. The descendants of Adam were Seth, Enoch, Canaan, Mahalel, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. The sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth. Descendants of Japheth. The descendants of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Mechesh, Mechesh, and Tiras. The descendants of Gomer were Ashkenaz. This is going to be a while. <laughs> Ashkenaz, 
Rifath and Togarma. The descendants of Javan were Elia, Elisha, Tarshish, Kitim, and Rodanim. Descendants of Ham. The descendants of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. The descendants of Cush were Siba, Havila, Sabta, Rama, and Sabteca. The descendants of Rama were Shiva and Dedan. Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. Mizraim was the ancestor of the Ludites, Anamites, Lehabites, Naphtuhites, Path Pathrusites, Kasluhites, and the Kaphthorites, from whom the Philistines came. Canaan's oldest son was Sidon, the ancestor of the Sidonians. Canaan was also the ancestor of the Hittites. Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sanites, Arvadites, Semarites, and Hamathites. That's it. <laughs> I thought there was more. The ancestor of the Sidonians. Canaan was also the ancestor of those, I just said. Descendants of Shem. The descendants of Shem were Elam. Ashur, Arfaxad, Lud, and Aram. The descendants of Aram were Uz, Hu, Gether, and Mash. Arfaxad was the father of Shelah. Shelah was the father of Eber. Eber had two sons. The first was named Peleg, which means division, for during his lifetime the people of the world were divided into different language groups. His brother's name was Yoktan. Yoktan. Yoktan was the ancestor of Almodad. Shelef, Shelel, Shelef, Hasar Maveth, Hasar Maveth, Jera, Hadoram, Uzal, Tikla, Obal, Abimael, Shiva. Yoktan was the ancestor of Almodad. Shelef, Hasarmaveth, Jera, 
Hadoram, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havila, and Jobab. All these were descendants of Joktan. So this is the family line descended from Shem. Arfaxad, Shela, Eber, Peleg, Reu, Serug, Nahor, Tera, and Abram, later known as Abraham. Descendants of Abraham. The sons of Abraham were Isaac and Ishmael. These are their gen genealogical records. The son of Ishmael were Nebaioth, Nebaioth, the oldest, Kedar, Ab Atbil, Mitzan, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tema, Hetur, Nafish, and Kedama. These were the sons of Ishmael. I'm sorry. Oops. The son of Keturah, Abraham's concubine were Simram, Yokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. The son of Yokshan were Sheba and Dedan. The son of Midian were Epha, Epher, Hanok, Abida, and Elda'a. All these were descendants of Abraham through his concubine Keturah. Keturah, descendants of Isaac. Abraham was father of Isaac. The son of Isaac were Esau and Israel. Descendants of Esau. The son of Esau were Eliphaz, Reuel, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. The descendants of Eliphaz were Tena, Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, Kenaz, and Amalek, who was born in Timnah. The descendants of Reuel were Nab Naha Nahath, Nahath, Zera, Shama, and Misa. Original peoples of Edom. The descendants of Sire were Lotan, Shobal, Sibion, Ana, Tishon, Eser, and Disham. The descendants of Lotan were Hori and Hemam. Lotan's sister was named Timna. The descendants of Shoban were Alvan, Manahath, Ebal, Shefo, and Onam. The descendants of Sibion were Ahaya and Ana. The son of Ana were Dishon. The son of Ana was Dishon. The descendants of Dishon were ha Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Keran. The descendants of Ezer were Bilhan, Saavan, 
and Akan. The descendants of Dishan were Uz and Aran. Rulers of Edom. These are the kings who ruled in the land of Edom before any king ruled over the Israelites. Bela, son of Beor, who ruled from the, his city of Dinahab, Dinaha, Dinhaba, Dinhaba, Dinhaba. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah, from Bozrah, became king in his place. When Jobab died, Husham, from the land of the Temanites, became king in his place. When Husham died, Hadad, son of Bedad, became king in his place and ruled from the city of Abith. He was the one who destroyed the Midianite army in the land of Moab. When Hadad died, Samla from the city of Marsreka became king in his place. When Shamla died, Shaul from the city of Rehoboth under Beber became king in his place. When Shaul died, Baal Hanan, son of Akbor, became king in his place. When Baal, well, Baal Hanan died, Hadad became king in his place and ruled from the city of Pau. His wife was Methatabel, the daughter of Matrit, and granddaughter of Mesahab. Then Hadad died. The clan leaders of Edom were Timna, Alva, Jetheth, Oholibama, Ela, Pinon, Kenaz, Teman, Mibzar, Magdiel, and Iram. These are the clan leaders of Edom. Chapter 2 descendants of Israel. Descendant of Israel, of Israel. The son of Israel were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, 
Ashakar, Zebulum, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, descendants of Judah. Judah had three sons from Bathshua, an Onan, no, Bashua, a Canaanite woman. Their names were Er, Onan, and Shelah. But the Lord saw that the oldest son, Er, was as wicked, was a wicked man, so he killed him. Later, Judah had twin sons from Tamar, his widowed daughter-in-law. Their name were Perez and Zerah. So Judah had five sons in all. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamu. The sons of Zerah were Simri, Ethan, Heman, Kalkol, and Darda. Five and all. The son of Carmi, a descendant of Simri, was Ahan, who brought disaster on Israel by taking plunder that had been set apart for the Lord. The son of Ethan was Azariah. From Judah's grandson Hezron to David. The son of Hezron were Jerahmil, Ram, and Caleb. Ram was the father of Aminabab. Aminadab. Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nash. Nachshon, a leader of Judah. Nachshon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse's first son was Eliab. His second was Adinadab. Abinadab. His third was Shimea. His fourth was Nathaniel. His fifth was Radai. His sixth was Ozem. And his seventh was David. Their sister were named Zeruiah and Abigail. Zeruiah had three sons named Abishai, Joab, and Asael, Asahel. Abigail married a man named Jether, an Ishmaelite, and they had a son named Amasa, all the descendants of his throne. His throne son Caleb had sons from his wife Asub Asuba and from Jerioth. Her sons were named Yeser, Shobab, and Ardon. After Asuba died, Caleb married Ephra Ephratah, Ephrathah, Ephrathah. And they had a son named Hur. Hur was the father of Uri. Uri was the father of Bezalel. When Hezron was six years old, he married 60 years old, he married Gilead's sister, the daughter of Machir. He had a son named Segub. Segub was the father of Hair, who ruled 23 towns in the land of Gilead. But Geshur and Aram captured the towns of Hair and also took Kenath and its 60 surrounding villages. All these were descendants of Machir, the father of Gilead. Son, soon after his run died in the town of Caleb Ephratha, his wife Abijah gave birth to a son named Ashur, the father of Tekoa. Descendant of his run's son, Jerahmil. The son of Jerahmil, the oldest son of her son, was Ram. The firstborn, Buna, Oren, Ozem, and Ahija. Jeramil had a second wife named Atara, Atara. She was the mother of Onam. The son of Ram, the oldest son of Jeramil, was Maas, Jamin, and Eker. The sons of, the sons of Onam were Shammai, Shammai, and Jada. Jara. The son of Shammai were Nadab and Abishur. The son of Abishur and his wife Abihail were Ahban and Molid. The son of Nadab were Seled and Apaim. Seled died without children, but Apaim had a son named Ishi. The son of Ishi was Sheshan. Sheshan had a descendant named Ahlai. Ahlaya. Ahlaya. The son of Jada 
Jamai's brother were Jether and Jonathan. Jether died without children, but Jonathan had two sons named Peleth and Zara and Sasa. These were all descendants of Jeremiah. Shashan had no sons, though he did have daughters. He also had an Egyptian servant named Jarha. Shashan gave one of his daughters to be the wife of Jarha, and they had a son named Atai. Atai was the father of Nathan. Nathan was the father of Sadab, Sabad. Sabad was the father of Eflal. Eflal was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jehu. Jehu was the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Helez. Helez was the father of Eleasha. Eleasa. Eleasa was the father of Sismai. Sismai was the father of Shalom. Shalom was the father of Jechemiah. Jechemiah was the father of Elisha. Of Elishama. Elishama. Descendants of his front son, Caleb. How many more chapters? This is chapter two. All right. Okay. The sentence of her son's son, Caleb. I am gonna do something. The sentence of her son, his own son, Caleb. The descendant of his strong son Caleb. The descendant of Caleb, the brother of Jeremiah, included Mesha, the firstborn who became the father of Seth. Caleb's descendants also included the son of Maresha, the father of Hebron. The son of Hebron were Korah, Tapua, Rechem, and Shema. Shema was the father of Rahaban. Raham. Raham was the father of Jorkeam. Rekem was the father of Shamai. The son of Shamai was Maon. Maon was the father of Beth, Beth, Beth Sewer. Caleb's concubine, Epha, gave birth to Haran, Mosa, and Gazes. Haran was the father of Gazes. The son of Jadai were Regem, Jotham, Keshan, Pelet, Epha, and Sha'af. Another of Caleb's concubines, Ma'aka, gave birth to Sheber and Tirana. She also gave birth to Sha'af, Sha'af the father of Mad, Madmana, and Sheba, the father of Macbena and Gibeah. 
Caleb also had a daughter named Aksha, Aksa. They were all descendants of Caleb. Descendants of Caleb's son Hor. The son of Hor, the oldest son of Caleb's wife Ephrathah, was Shobal, the founder of Kiriath Jerim, Jerim, Salma, the founder of Bethlehem, and Hareth, the founder of Beth Gader. The descendants of Jobal, the founder of Kiriath Jerim, were Haroe. Have the Manahathites and the families of Kiriath Jearim, the Ethrites, Puthites, Shumathites, and Misharites, for whom came the people of Sora and Eshtao. The descendants of Sama were the people of Bethlehem, the Netho, Netophathites, Atroth, Beth Joab, the other half of the Maha Manahathites, the Sorites, and the families of, of scribes living in Jabez, Jabez the Thirathites, Shimeathites, and Sukathites. All these were Kenites who descended from Hamath, the father of the family of Rechab. Rechab. I was done. Okay, I am going to leave it at that for this chapter. No, I'm going to do one more. Chapter 3, Descendants of David. These are the sons of David who were born to, in Hebron. The oldest was Amnon, whose mother was Ahinoam from Jezreel. The second was Daniel, whose mother was Abigail from Carmel. The third was Absalom, whose mother was Maaka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. The fourth was Adonijah, whose mother was Hagith. The fifth was Shephatiah, whose mother was Abital. The sixth was Ithriam, whose mother was Egla, David's wife. These six sons were born to David in Hebron, where he reigned seven and a half years. Then David reigned another 33 years in Jerusalem. The sons born to David in Jerusalem included Shamua, Shamua. Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon. Their mother was Bathsheba, the daughter of Amiel.
Then David reigned another 33 years in Jerusalem. The sons born to David in Jerusalem included Shamua, Jobab, Nathan, and Solomon. Their mother was Bathsheba, the daughter of Amiel. David also had nine other sons, Ibhar, Elishua, Opelet, Nogah, Nefeg, Japhia, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphelet. These were the sons of David, not including his sons born to his concubines. To his concubines, their sister was named Tamar. Descendants of Solomon. The descendants of Solomon were Rehoboam, Abijah, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Anasiah, Joash, Amaziah, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Ammon, and Josiah. The son of Josiah were Johanan, the oldest Jehoiakim, the second Zedekiah, the third, and Jehoahaz, Jehoahaz, the fourth. The successors of Jehoiakim were his son Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, and his brother Zedekiah. Descendants of Jehoahim, Je Jehoiakim. The sons of Jehoiakim, who was taken prisoner by the Babylonians, were Shel Sheltiel, Malkiram, Pedaiah, Shenazar, Jakamiah, Koshama, and Nadabiah. The sons of Pedaiah were Zerubab Zerubabel and Shimei. The son of Zerubbabel were Meshulam and Hananiah. Their sister was Shelomith. His five other sons were Hashuba, Ohel, Berechiah, Hasadiah, and Yushab Hesed. The son of Hananiah were Pelatiah and Jeshahiah. Jeshahiah's son was Rephahiah. Rephahiah's son was Arnan. Arnan's son was Obadiah. Obadiah's son, Obadiah's son was Sekaniah. The descendants of Sekaniah were Shemaiah and his sons Hatush, Igal, Bariah, Neariah, and Shaphat. Six in all. The son of Neraiah were Elioenai, Elioenai, Hiskaiah, Hiskaiah, and Asrikam, three in all. The son of Eloianiah were Hodaviah, Eliashabib, Pelaiah, Akub, Johanan, Telaiah, and Anani, seven in all. I'm gonna write that for now. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'm gonna put more wood on the fire, and we'll continue on to the chapter four. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. See you later.